Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got the usual breakdown for the 12th Isanzo dev blog. So as most of you have probably noticed, these have started to increase in frequency, and this week we got a lot of images and information. I want to start by showing the most important bit in that it is confirmed there will be physical copies for sale both for last and current gen consoles. And to quote the most recent dev post directly, we're happy to confirm that we've partnered up with retailers to arrange a physical edition of Isanzo. That means Isanzo will be appearing in selected stores around the world. More information about the physical and digital editions, including pricing, will be shared with you in the next dev blog. No, some of these retailers are stating a release date of June 30th, and this is only a provisional release date. Once we have a release date set, we will let you know. Until then, don't be April fooled, make sure to hear it from us first. So that's great news, and even though that's not an exact release date, I think that gives us a pretty good time frame for what we can expect. But beyond all this release information, we got a lot of gameplay in the form of an in-depth look at the Monte Sabatino map. And in this article, we also now have a much better idea of how the objective system and overall map flow will work in Isanzo. Like I explained a bit in my fourth dead blog breakdown, the map will work pretty similarly to Battlefield's Breakthrough or Grand Operations mode. There will be multiple sectors, each with their own respective amount of objectives, that must be captured in order for the attacking team to move on. On Monte Sabatino, the first objective is a large hill that the attacking Italians will have to push to the top of and capture from the Austro-Hungarians. This seems like it will be one of, if not the most difficult offensive sections of the map, because the defenders will have both the high ground and heavily fortified positions. I hope it's not so hard that every map results in an Italian defeat, but in any case, all strongly defended positions can be countered with some well-placed artillery or smoke screens. So once you do get to the top of this hill, there's a large plateau of more traditional trenches, but they seem to be in shorter sections than those seen in other games like Verdun and Tannenberg because of the historically rocky terrain. Once the trench lines of the mountaintop have been overrun by the Italians, they will have to push down the opposite mountainside and capture the train yard. This is a single objective sector that actually reminds me a lot of that one train objective from Tannenberg, but regardless, it makes for an expansive bit of cover and finally gives the Italians the high ground advantage for a change. Then, the last objective of the map is on the other side of the critical Sulkin Bridge. Now, this is where in the trailer we had reason to believe there would be some form of levolution, and this was confirmed by the devs with their description of this bridge. Historically, the defenders blew up the bridge using 930 kilograms or 2,050 pounds of ecrosite. You may get to see this play out in game. A cart full of explosives on the bridge can be armed by the Austro-Hungarians as with any sabotage objective. If the Italians aren't quick to disarm any such charges, bye bye bridge. Once that's out of the way, the Italians will somehow have to get across the river and breach the final objective, a churchyard and a house serving as the last defensive positions for the Austro-Hungarians. Now, I want to mention something I've noticed and that the devs seem to put some emphasis on in their presentation of this map's design. You have more open push lanes at the start, followed by trench networks and altitude varying pathways, then some nice waterside and cliff face combat, finished out with a taste of urban environment. All of these aspects being introduced on one map is a massively promising concept for the game's overall map design that instantly tells me the game will have much more gameplay variety than its previous counterparts. This is in combination with the small-scale squad mechanics and the apparent benefits to large-scale tactical communication that to me makes Isanzo something that increases in promise and potential with each bit of information. Also, thank you devs for giving more literal 1080p footage to work with instead of just GIFs, but I still have my fingers crossed hoping for a new gameplay trailer at the WASD Games Expo next week. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today, and I hope you're all just as excited about Isanzo as I am. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.